All right, hi guys. Uh, today we're going to kind of delve into this igneous rock identification chart. You've already learned about all the different properties of these different igneous rocks and how that's related to where they form, the environment of formation. So we kind of looked at this top section of the reference table on page six. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna kind of link this into the bottom part of the reference table, um, which you can see has a bunch of different minerals that we've already learned about. So potassium feldspar and quartz and pelagioclase and pyroxene and olivine. These are all minerals that we learned and identified in lab. And now we're gonna link those uh, into our rocks that are up above. So we wanna know basically what are these rocks made of? What is their mineral composition? And as you can see, um, the minerals are located directly below where the rocks are located. So if we want to kind of identify the mineral composition of something like granite, we would have to just analyze that shape, that box of granite, which is basically right here. Okay, this section, and I'll, I'll make this more opaque. So let me just change that a little bit. Okay, so everything underneath of granite is essentially a mineral that could be in granite. Okay, so if you look at this, granite has potassium feldspar as well as quartz as well as plagioclase feldspar, this section right here has a little bit of biotite and a little bit of amphibole, okay? And depending upon the variety of granite, you might have a little bit more or a little bit less, and the granite might be a little bit more in the pink range or it might be more white, depending upon the percentage of minerals within it, okay? Same is true with something like um, basalt, if you uh, consider basalt, it's over here. So if I draw a little box around basalt, basalt is a much different, it's an igneous rock, but it's very different in its uh, color. And that's all based upon the fact that it has different minerals within it. So basalt, it would be over here and they would have more of plagioclase, feldspar, pyroxene, maybe some olivine and some amphibole in it. And so these are a little bit more dark green in color uh, as or dark black in color when it comes to basalt. So based upon the mineral, properties or mineral percentages, you're going to have darker or lighter min, um, igneous rocks. Okay. Now the next step after this is kind of pulling this into, okay, what is the actual percentage of the minerals within that rock? And so I'm going to go to my screen here because it's a little bit easier to work with on this, on my whiteboard. So let's say that we had a very specific rock and that specific rock was located, let's say, let's say it's a granite. But I want to say, okay, this is all different types of granite, but specifically I want a granite, let's say it's like right here. So I'm going to draw a line down like this, straight down. Okay. And you would have a line drawn on your paper already. And you'd say, okay, what is the mineral percentage of that specific granite? And so you would take a piece of paper and you would put it on here like this, right along the line. Okay. And then you would mark every section as you can see, I'm, I'm marking each section individually of each mineral. Okay, this is kind of like what we did with contour profile, pretty similar. Okay, so this top little bit right here, this little section is the mineral potassium feldspar. So I'm going to write right in here, just so I know what that is. I'm going to label that. I'm going to call it K spar, just because I want to abbreviate these things that I want to write them all out. So that's potassium feldspar. This next section after that, right in here, these dots, that is quartz, as you can see on the screen. So I'm gonna write Q for quartz, okay? This next section after that is labeled actually over here. That's plagioclase feldspar. I'm just gonna call that plage, P-L-A-G, make it simple. This little section right here is biotite. So I'm just gonna write B for biotite. And then this bottom section right here is amphibole. So I'm gonna write an A for amphibole. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out how much, what is the percentage of these minerals? And that's where this over here comes into play, okay? Or even on this other side over here, you have these percentages over here. Now, the best way to do this is just to take this, I'm gonna do just potassium feldspar first. So I'm gonna bring this right down to the bottom of my scale, okay? And as you can see, potassium feldspar goes from the bottom here up to there, and so we have to figure out how much that is. Well, each one of these lines, if you look at zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So they go by five. So the percentage of potassium feldspar that I have here 
is approximately, according to what we just saw, about 10%. I'm going to write that down right next to it, 10% potassium feldspar. Okay, so how much quartz do I have? Well, this is the section of quartz from here right up to here. Okay, so I'm going to put that bottom on zero, and I'm going to estimate what that is. And you can try to be as precise as possible. It looks like I have approximately, well, that's 25, 30, about 35% quartz. Okay, so I'll write that down. Plagioclase, slide it up. So there's the bottom of plagioclase right there. Okay, so that's on zero. And it looks like it goes up to about right there. Well, how much is that? Well, that's 25 and that's 30. It's like somewhere in between 25 and 30, maybe 27 or 28. So I'm just going to write that down, 28%. Okay, biotite right here. It's that section right there. So that's approximately 15 or so percent. And then finally, amphibole, bottom section right here. Okay, now if you look, 5, 10, 15, it's somewhere in between maybe, I don't know, 12-ish. Okay, so now's the next step. Obviously, all of these all together make up the percentage of granite, okay, or even pegmatite, or even rhyolite. They're all the same along this line. But we want to make sure that these numbers add up to 100, okay? So you could, if you really need to, get a calculator and add them all up. I mean, I think you could probably do this in your head, but I'll do it on here just to prove it to you. Okay, so 10 plus 35 plus 28 plus 15 plus 12 should equal 100, and it does. Okay, so 100%. Now, if your numbers don't add up to 100% total, then you probably were just a little bit off in your estimation. Maybe this one was a little bit off. Maybe this was a little bit off. And you can adjust your numbers to make it fit to 100%, as long as you're not adjusting them too much. Okay? Um, you don't want to, like, skew it, like, 10% or, or more than 5%, really. Okay? So that's, that's how you do mineral percentages using the igneous rock identification chart on your reference table. And uh, if you have any questions about how to do that, you're going to do some practice with that today. But if you have any questions, uh, just send me an email.